All right, I'm doing a quick bullshit video just to show you guys how to like import this stuff, find these models. These models are really hard to get. So what you really want to do is go here to Bing or Google, type in Silent Hill, copy the Japanese text, then go to like a website like Mandarake, which is uh, straight, you get to order directly from Japan. It's like a used goods store, but their used toys, their used toys or anything is still like brand new. Now click on toy. Go to Garage Kits, and it's going to weed out, and then type in Silent Hill, you know, just copy and paste, and here you go. Now, keep in mind, these sell out quick, because it's not just you looking for it, it's also me looking for it, other people, and they sell out quick, and then you kind of get the idea of, like, what exactly the prices are. Like, this one's always for sale, because... You know, Homecoming fucking suck, dude. Alright, fuck that game. But, like, look at Awesome One's closer. 34,000 yen. And the yen is very low right now. So, if you convert that to American dollars, that's like 200, like 20 bucks maybe. Uh, another rare bubble nurse. This isn't a garage kit, but I know people are looking for her. That's not a garage kit. But look, they sell out quick. So, my best bet for you is keep. Searching every morning, type in Silent Hill, get, keep checking. This is how I find most of my garage kits. Just like, it's not just Silent Hill. You, if you look at my other videos, I'm painting Gundam, I'm painting a Ava models. I'm painting a little bit of everything. So I'm always looking for stuff. But Silent Hill models are also just, they're expensive too, man. They're not cheap at all. And I see shit like, even I don't even have that I really want, like... I'm missing Walter. I really want Walter. I really want Cynthia. I'm missing, like, anything from Silent Hill 4, like, I can't find. Like, I really want the victims. I think I have a complete set of 2 and 3. And they never really made Garage Kids from Part 1. Well, Hell Painter never did. And now, the next website you can use, go to Auction Yahoo. Now, type in that. You know. And you're gonna keep looking. Look, there's a Gecko Heather right there. She's gonna be up for grabs. Four days left, zero bids. That's gonna go up though. And just keep hunting, keep searching. And uh, best of luck, guys. I really hope you find it. And get some fucking weird bootlegs. Some recasts. Not a whole lot going on though. All right. Look, a missionary. She's pretty easy. A Maria. Alright, good luck guys. I hope this video helps you. Alright, after all that is said and done, uh, we gotta decide on a model we wanna work on. For this video, I have picked the Silent Hill 3 Nurse Ultimate version. Uh, I've been told that this is the hardest, one of the hard, one of the, if not the hardest Silent Hill models to find. And uh, from what I've seen so far after doing my research, and uh, yeah, I believe it. Uh, apparently, there's only 15 of these in existence, which I don't know if I believe or not. Uh, I was lucky to get one of these many years ago. Let's see, 2012, around then, you know, it was pretty easy, easier to get. But now there's a lot of uh, competition when it comes to, you know, getting these models. So people want a complete collection. And uh, Silent Hill 3 is my second favorite Silent Hill game. And uh, I love the character designs in this game probably more than Silent Hill 2. And uh, Silent Hill Nurse, 3 Nurse, is my favorite version of the nurses from Silent Hill. So, sorry, not sorry. Don't really care for the Bubblehead Nurse. That's just me. So, alright. Let's uh, take a look. Um, okay. I mean, I've opened this up in the past, but I never really like, started working on it. So now's the time to work on the model. A lot of popcorn. Alright, let's go ahead and start with what we got. So, we got two heads. They look like they are optional. We have a Silent Hill 3 nurse head, which looks pretty good. The sculpt is pretty well. Pretty well. Uh, got some flashing, some cleanup to do. Not so bad. And I think it comes with a Silent Hill 2 nurse. Head or you know, typical bubble head nurse. 
Uh, you can make it swappable if you want. I don't remember these heads popping up in Silent Hill 3. Uh, I believe it was just this nurse. So, don't understand. Plus, this is gray resin. This is white resin. And the rest of it looks like it's regular resin. Well, don't that throw you off. That's just pretty much how garage kits are like. And as you can see, you got a lot of cleanup to do. A lot of cleanup. What I like to do is take a pencil and just trace over where the cleanup is going to be. So when I start sanding, kind of don't miss anything. Just like that. Some na oh man, some nasty ones. That's my problem with Hell Painter. They, it's Hell Painter is like um, it's like an original garage kit, like old school monster kits, or I don't know how many of you guys built like garage kits from America from like the 80s and 90s. The rough, and uh, this reminds me a lot of them compared to the new models made by Vortor Chica. Uh, a little down there. Those are pretty simple when it comes to cleanup. This, on the other hand, is not. And if you look closely, there's tons of tiny little bubbles that we're gonna have to take care of. So this is gonna be a lot of fun. Let's take a look at the torso. The torso looks good. Obviously, everyone's favorite part. All right, we got the pipe, because she carries a pipe. And this looks like it's gonna be hell to clean. All right, looks like we got two arms right now for the left. We got one arm for the right. We have two different hands for the right. And we have a thumb for one of the hands. And we have the gun. This is the reason why I like the nurse so much. It's very crazy. And, you know, they kind of spam these nurses in this game. And then some of them have a gun and it just makes it a lot harder. But uh, it's a nice touch. Very different. Okay, so what we got here is we have one right arm, two left arms. The right arms, we can make it permanently attached and then add a magnet to the right hand so we can swap out the hands while we can attach a magnet to the torso to the arms. So make the left arms detachable, swap out. The same with the head. Even though I'm not a fan of this head, I'll still put a magnet in there to make it look like it's detachable. All right, now let me go ahead and start cleaning up some of these parts and I'll uh, show you some pointers. All right, one big common problem are these air bubbles. This is caused by when they did the resin porn and uh, I guess just an air bubble got in here and that's it. Fortunately, this was on the back of the arm, which is very easy to fix. It's not any crazy loss of detail like the face or some fingers, because those could be really hard to re-sculpt, but this is easy. I'll show you how to get rid of this. And it looks like I have another air bubble on the back of the head, so I have to re-sculpt some of the hair, which is pretty, pretty easy, because uh, the hair is pretty simple. start with some assembly work so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a magnet so uh, these arms are swappable so let's go ahead and drill perfect I have these little magnets which are like awesome for these type of models just kind of squeeze it in there slide it off and there you go it's like snug enough where you don't have to worry about it coming out I mean, you could glue it in. So now what I want to do is I want to match this up with this. I want to make sure I'm about here. So let's go ahead and drill one. Pretty much center. Center. This is all chopped up right here too. 
It's gonna have to get sanded down. Oh. That's good. Let's make sure we're following the right position of these magnets. So I want it this way, going down. There you go. Look at that. Look how easy that was. Awesome, right? So, like, well, this gap here, I'm going to show you how to get rid of that gap. This way it's a little more even. But this is just for quick assembly. Pretty cool. Let's go on to the next one. So, putty work. Here's what we're going to need. This is the bread and butter. You get this pretty much anywhere. Uh, we got dicks. Not, not, not blicks. Get this at blicks. So, Let's go ahead and make a small batch. I need some more soon. I'm just doing small. I'm only doing this little arm. Just to fill up this big bubble. So I'm gonna take this much. There we go, it looks about even. Go ahead and mix it up. Pretty uniform. It's ready to go. You want to mix this stuff for about five minutes because you want it to activate that way. What are you really doing? This is this is easy. This is the easiest bubble work you're gonna ever have to do if you come across it. You kind of just press it in, just like that. Just press it in. Make sure it's filled. Squeeze as much as I can in there. I want this thing to be completely. Usually, and then what you could do now is if you want, you could wet your finger and you can wet this up, make it smooth it out, but I don't really care because I'm just going to sand away anyway with this. So, unfortunately, now I have to let this dry for about, ooh, I'm going to say overnight. And so I can sand this tomorrow and then this will be good to go. Let's go ahead and attach these hands. Oh, I got I got so I gotta open one here, so so let's go ahead and attach some hands to this. Uh what the hell is this doing here? I really don't care. I'm just gonna remove it anyway. Like I'm sure you could have drilled, but I like magnets. I like magnets help a lot. Give it a nice slice. Clean that up. A little bubble work here, I'll take care of later. So let's go ahead and center it up there. Okay. Alright, let's put this in here. Slide that out, that's done. Press it down a little more. There we go. Okay, now we're gonna want to attach this and this. Look at this one. This one sucks. So let's go ahead. For some reason, this 
video was corrupted when I tried saving this video. It was just a, a peg that was molded on the bottom of the bubble head nurse. I just removed it. Something pretty simple. All right, here's a fun experiment I like to do. When these models are like covered in bubbles, like most of these Hell Painter models, and they got all these micro bubbles here, you see? That's a hole, that's a hole. But there's also all this detail. Uh, I'm gonna have to brush some lacquer into that. And I'll show you that in a second. But for now, here's what I wanna show you. Uh, something, like you're gonna see these size gaps, these bubbles, what you want to do is kind of just throw some glue in there, like that, fill it up. Like that. Sorry if it gets up. For this model, I'm not too careful about being clean, but other models, I'd be a little more cleaner about this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sprinkle some uh, bacon soda into there. See, the bacon sort of kind of activates the glue to like dry right away, but it doesn't like shrink into the part like some of the other activation. So it kind of builds like a whole new, uh, so this is good for like bubbles that size. You saw me take care of other bubbles. That's good. For, that is good for that size. And what you could do, like I've done down here, is you kind of just smear a lot of glue on there. Then you just sprinkle more baking soda on there and you kind of just press it in. That covers up all those micro bubbles. I'm not worried about the details down here. I'm more concerned about the details on the dress because 
uh, I don't want to lose any of that. So I'm going to go ahead and brush some green lacquer into there. Yeah, I'll show you what I do with that. I'm just doing some cleaning also. Some of the, like, res these resin models, sometimes they have these, like, pockets of resin balls. You just scrape them out. They're like... They're like hidden. They're like, they, they, they hide. But once you like inspect and inspect, you keep checking, they show, they pop out. Let's see. Next up, let's see. This is the lacquer paste I like using finishers lacquer paste. Uh, you can thin it down pretty well with the cell lacquer thinner to, to go with it. And uh, once it's like, uh, that looks pretty good. Well, when it's like wet, wet enough, it's not too thick. <sighs> anyway, let's go ahead and brush it on. I have this watered down enough so I won't cover any of the old details. I'm just trying to cover up all these pockets of bubbles. Just like that. All this. I'm not worrying about losing details on this because it's, it's pretty thin enough to not cover the details, but it's thin enough to go into the bubbles. And this is perfect for this because it doesn't, this specific thinner I mean, this specific, uh, this specific, uh, putty doesn't really shrink like most putties, micro putties. They shrink, so you gotta keep applying multiple coat, multiple coats, but for this one, you really don't have to. And this dries pretty quickly. Once it's done, I can uh, go ahead and give it a light sanding, and that'll pretty much seal the deal. Man, this model is covered in this shit. Look at another giant bubble hole. Man, this thing is. Oh man, why do people pay so much money for these models? I feel. I, you know, I really do feel bad for guys that buy these, thinking like, "Oh yeah, I want a great." Silent Hill piece for my uh, collection. You know, like I love the video games. I want some of the characters or whatever, some of the, the creatures, and they get it, and they're like, "Fuck, <laughs> this is this is hard as hell. How do I how do I fix this?" Well, I hope this video helps. All right, now that our putty's uh, done drying, we'll just go ahead and hit it. Hit it with a light 400 grit. Kind of just takes the surface off, but it leaves all that, all those imperfections is uh, taken care of. Like 400 grit because uh, it doesn't really remove too much detail. It doesn't really affect the model so much. It just kind of clears off all this loose end. Uh, it's pretty nice. Alright, time to activate cheat mode with the sanding. Especially these older models where they're just covered in these giant seam lines. So let me show you a trick. This is going to be 120 grit. It's a little. This one's a little more worn out. This is one I would rather use. So what we want to do is get some, you know, my CA glue. Give this a nice little squirt. Like that. Just place this right here, like so. Alright, that's good. Give it a 
cut. I hope that's good. You want to get one of these uh, tools? You know, you don't have to get the Mr. Hobby one. You can get uh, any. You know, there's, you know, third-party brands that are way cheaper, and they do the same thing. I'm just a jerk, and I just said, "Oh, let me get Mr. Hobby," and then the amount of money you spend on this, you could just buy a really cheap one. You get three of them for the price of this. So anyway, you could use this. See, auto sander. Um, I'm only doing this quickly here before I go and actually into a ventilated area because this shit picks up dust like crazy So what you want to do is use this to get rid of these really thick mold lines from here uh, You just want to be quick about it because you don't want to go too long and lose the details You really just want to bring this down leveled where I puttied before, now nice and smooth, looks like it's part of it. Alright, so let me go ahead and finish doing this with all the rest of it. Okay, let me explain this. Uh, Two-part epoxy, I use this to extend the front skirt because Hell Painter reused the same body from his Silent Hill 2 nurse to make the Silent Hill 3 nurse, but he never really extended the front apron because the Silent Hill 3 nurse has a different outfit pretty much. So she has like a front apron that extends past her skirt. So just look up the photos, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's a pretty simple, uh, pretty simple to extend it, just follow what I'm doing. If I could do this, you can do this. Anybody could do this. A couple putty tools help you shape it out. And it doesn't need to be perfect because her outfit's already torn up and, you know, all this crap going on it. So this is also really good if you want to just practice. But getting used to sculpting. I'm not an expert whatsoever. I'm a freaking rookie with sculpting. So just take it from me. If I could do it. You can do it. Alright, so the putty has dried. I've been just lightly sanding it to like smooth it out, blend it in. So it looks like it's all one part. Uh, as you can tell over here, I, I, I've been sanding, cleaning up. And then over here is still a little uh, lumpy and gross. Uh, so I'm going to smooth it out. And then what I do is add in details like they have all over her skirt. It's pretty easy. I'm not worried about losing those details. Uh, and once you prime it, you won't even see the difference. But um, what I, here's what I did so far. So if you look, it looks like this is the front apron. How this is now pushed down and back. The, uh, her butt. See how it looks like, see how it's raised a little bit? So it looks like if she was wearing the front apron, uh, it's going over. Yeah, this is really smooth and the details are out now because of the sanding, but... As I said before, uh, that's easy to put back and I'll show you how to do that after I show you this. So what we're gonna do is I'll show you how I, I'm gonna how I did this on that side. So what we're gonna need, let's get a pencil. See, I kind of traced, you kind of want to follow the way of the body structure. It's going up like that. You don't want to just put an apron going over here or over there. Kind of want to follow. So what we're gonna do first is just go here and just kind of follow, kind of follow the body. I think that would look good. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to get rid of a butt. I want to. I don't have. I don't really don't want to sculpt a new butt. I think that looks. I might have to sculpt something here just to bring it out. So yeah, this is what I like like that. It's going up. It's kind of going. I 
Yeah, it's kind of going in line with that one. So what I'm going to do is just, these are really good files to have. I've used, you know, I've been using it. Uh, the Tamiya 3 pack metal file, you get these for like 10 bucks on Amazon or whatever. Go for it. You need this file, it helps a lot. I'm just going to start sketching my way up. It's kind of sharp, so it helps. And don't give me shit about sanding the details. You know what the details are? The, the, the sculptor's fingerprints are all over this model, so you have to get rid of it anyway. And then it looks like, yeah. So yeah, don't, don't, don't even start with me. All right, I think that's good. All right. All right, next tool I'm gonna use is my scriber. Uh, this is good for uh, plastic models. This is this is meant for plastic models, but it does help with resin. I use this also to clean up mostly my resin details on my robots. Uh, not really uh, character models, but this is good for like, de getting sharp details. But this also helps to like just dig in. And now with all the sketching I did, I have kind of have like a line I could trace. It's kind of easy to. Yeah, see? Something like that. Don't want to be too jagged. There we go. I got something going on here. Start here. Open that up. You see? That's getting opened up now. And I'm going to want to follow that where I was. Don't worry about all those extra scratches I put into it because when you start sanding, you pretty much get rid of all that. Okay, now next up. That was a 0.3 size, now I'm going for a 1.0 size, a little bigger. If you want to know the difference, see how this is a little thicker. That was thinner. So this is going to really open it up and give me a better area to work with. Can I just go slow? Alright, after going through it a few more times, now you can see a differential uh, where I want, now I want to sand this area just here down to match the scraped area. So this front looks raised. So some strong ass sandpaper. Alright, now I'm going to add a little more detail to the gun. I've been cleaning it up slowly. Uh, I gotta heat this up. This barrel is pretty warped. It has to come up a little. But this gun barrel needs to be deepened just a little. So you get these little drill bits. And I think this will match up nicely. There we go. That was, uh, yeah, that's good. 
I'll go ahead. Deepen it. So it doesn't look like it's clogged full of shit. It's like a little detail which you probably won't even see. But uh, I usually do this with all my models, regardless what it is. How is that? Better? A little more. There we go. That's better. Let me go ahead and straighten this out, this barrel. Alright, all this trick in the book. Heating up warped parts that happen often in garage kits. Just heat it up with a hairdryer, run it under some cold water afterwards to straighten it up, and to cure it from ever sagging again. Cleaning up with the uh, Tamiya Mr. Metal File 3 pack set, you can find pretty easily. Uh, that straight file is like amazing. You can use that to clean up hair with like every garage kit. And you can see here I traced the uh, puttied area, the back of the hood, I had a fix. It's so easy. And this tool is like essential for everything. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and now scrub every piece. I had this soak in simple green for about a week. Uh, this is going to help remove all that m mold, you know, the slimy shit that's all over resin. When they mold it, it comes out of the mold release. Uh, simple green is pretty uh, safe, it's not toxic, but I'm still wearing gloves because of, uh, yeah, you never know. I appreciate it. this wall on my phone while my camera's charging and maybe the quality is actually better on my phone than my camera well that's life so what i'm doing now is i'm just going to use some uh, surfacer 1000 to do a quick coverage this helps me look for imperfections before i really seal it in with some uh, actual surfacer do some full coverage so for now i'm just going to go ahead and blast her with quick surfacer This is going to really point out the imperfections now. Now you should be able to see a lot more. She's all done drying. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and inspect every part once again and look for more imperfections. Let me see. In here is a trap. Her face isn't so bad. How's her hair looking? How's that repair we did? See, that was the repair we did right there. Barely tell. Got some bubbles I gotta fix still. The first words that I left hand, a false What's going on? What are you doing? What are you doing? Huh? Pretty good. 
pretty good. What I probably gotta do now is kind of just like tear it up a little along the edge. Which isn't so bad. It's looking pretty... Pretty good. Definitely can tell it's a separate piece. Yeah, not bad. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna clean this up down here. I'm gonna fix this up, make it look a little torn up and down there. Then I'll go ahead and attach the body to the waist and putty all that area. Very quick explanation, two part epoxy putty. Put it on every joint that you put a magnet on to blend into the part uh, better, so to say. So when you swap parts, there's no gaps in between. I can fill up all these little areas with it. Pretty simple. Let it dry, then sand. Okay, added more putty to uh, blend the two pieces in, get rid of that gap. Uh, once again, two part epoxy, easy to easy peasy. And uh, unfortunately, she lost a lot of how do I say this cheek from the sanding. So I had to, you know, kind of give her a butt implant to build up her butt again. You know, not a fan of sexualizing toys, but this is just, yeah, whatever, man. You, you know what I'm saying. It is what it is. Fairly, fairly easy to do. Just very easy. All right, what I'm doing here is just using my Dremel and adding more detail to the parts I sculpted. And from when I was sanding, I did lose some detail, but it's no problem. Dremel just takes care of it. One, two, three. And in this step, I just went ahead with my lacquer putty and just added more detail to the parts I sculpted. Uh, you know, a little... You know, just add... Clunks and... Chunks? I don't know how to describe it. Just go for it, dude. video time. Uh, currently on break at work and uh, I wanted to get some primer on this so when I get home I can do some more work to it. So let me go ahead and spray some primer. But uh, I think I'm, I think it came out pretty good with all the extra detail I put in. I think I gotta clean up around the arm a little more but I think the detail I added should blend in pretty nicely. So let's uh, go ahead and add some more primer. Alright, the part everybody's been waiting for, painting. So how the hell do you paint this model? Well, there's no guide to it. You kind of have to wing it. You can't really follow a flesh tone for this model because they really, they don't have normal skin. These Silent Hill creatures, they're all over the place. And uh, what I'd started for with is uh, just underlaying some darker tones. Like, you have to base everything off the Masahiro Ito rendering or look up photos of how she looked in the PS2 game and kind of go with that. I saw that these were the darker areas so I went in and filled that in. And then here is where I'm going to start the skin tone. These are Dugram colors from Gaia Notes. Uh, chocolate brown, believe it or not, is an awesome purple brownish color to help with most of these creatures all have like this color to it, this purplish, brownish, pale, and uh, here she has like a darker spot to look like she's wearing stockings, and then, or is she not? Who knows? And then what I did was I kept adding like lighter, lighter, whiter colors to it, and I'm just like filling in the other areas which I didn't paint with that darker brown. Her arms, her chest, the top of her legs. And uh, if you look quickly, you can see how that I did the back of her neck, because that part is really dark. And with the heads, just these simple little areas. There's no real right way to paint in these. But if you want, just keep watching the video. Rewind, look, pay attention. I'm just mixing the same color with <laughs> lighter and lighter colors. That's it. It's the, it. I literally used three different bottles of paint 
to make all these skin tones. And I just mix them back and forth, back and forth, get the right one, go back, hit it with a darker color, go back, hit it with a lighter color, and so forth. And then the most of the paint work that you have to do is hand painting details. And what I'm doing mostly is blending my colors. I'll darken an area, then I'll go ahead and paint over it to blend it all together with the lighter color. Like really light coats blend in the colors together. Now for this step what I'm doing is I'm going over every area I part I painted with a flesh tone. Like I think I used like a Gaia flesh tone. I had it really thinned down and I went over every part just to add a little little bit of flesh coloring to all the areas I painted to make it look like hey she was human at one point now she's a demon and uh, for the most part you just kind of go on the top angle down you don't have to cover the entire piece just take your time with this part and I always just hit the higher areas with the uh, brighter colors Here I went back and I darkened the areas I previously darkened when I first started painting because uh, there's no right or way, right or wrong way to paint in these models. Mostly like skin tones in general. Go back and forth, back and forth. Keep looking at your source image and uh, you get the, until you like what you see. Like here, I'm painting the areas where I eventually will add blood to it because if you look at Masahiro Ito's renderings or how she looks she always has like a red mark on her arms there you know and then you just go from there all right here's a cheat code I use this on all my flesh tones on everything I paint I don't care what you paint in throw this on it motos flesh effect. This has a red tint and it really smooth smoothens out the flesh. I love this paint. I'll use this on anything I paint for the rest of my life. If they keep producing it, I'll keep buying it. that's on these nurse caps. It's like a turquoise I use. But you know what? I actually used Hatsune Miku Blue from Gaia. Because why not? I just forgot to do this in the previous steps. I'm just deepening out the uh, pipe to look like it's you know, a hollow pipe. Not just like a piece of resin. No, I didn't record myself taping the model because it's just masking. It's very boring and time-consuming. Uh, her her cap is a, a brighter color than her gown, so I'm painting this separately. So I'm starting with a gray to add some uh, shading to it. Then I'll go ahead and hit it with the off-white to finish it off. Just like that. And don't be perfect with your paint. You want it looking blotchy and everything. There we go. Alright, on to the fun part, the dress. After everything's masked off, you want to focus on these areas when you're adding your tones. Uh, for the most part, her dress is a cream, ivory, white, colors. If, if you look at what I'm doing, you kind of get the idea like, oh yeah, this looks like the PS2 graphics. Because that's what I'm going off. So I start out with a nice dark cream, and then going with some uh, lighter browns. 
just for all the shading and the depth, darker recessed areas of her dress. And then I'll go ahead and then I'll paint the areas of the dress of like an off-white that I didn't shade. And then what I do is I paint the entire thing at once, not focusing, just blending everything in one into one color. But you want to leave the depth for everything else. And here's the here's the good one. Finishers Ivory White. I'm using this to highlight the dress now in all the higher areas and uh, to help blend in everything even better. I masked her, masked her up uh, one more time just to paint the belt, the collars, and the cuffs a little brighter. Alright, what you want to do now is seal your colors completely with gloss coat. Put a nice thick layer of gloss coat, like two coats of it on everything you painted. This is going to help a lot when it comes to hand painting. I didn't record uh, just blasting this with gun metal. And it's like, use any metallic color you want with the uh, gun. Uh, gun metal is a good choice. So right here now I'm attaching the thumb part to it. I think I forgot to paint the thumb, but it doesn't really matter because once I start laying on all these washes and you won't even tell. So use that so you can squeeze the glue out so you can sand it down and uh, get rid of that line so it looks like, you know, she has a hand. Like this step right here. I'm using sandpaper. I'm going to get rid of that line. I'm going to go ahead and start throwing some washes all over this. The main washes I use for this entire model is Citadel Agrax Earthshade and Citadel Gnome Oil. I went ahead and used pretty much all my Citadel washes because they're very easy to use and they're very easy to take off. Oh yeah, and I went ahead and just painted some brown on the gun handle because to match the gun handle. Nice brown. Then I went ahead and I threw it on some Nuln oil all over the gun to make it a little grimy. Alright, I'm going to start now with my uh, washes and everything. I'm going to go ahead and add Agrax Earthshade to all the gloves. And what you do is apply it and then you want to hit it real quickly with the uh, paper towel before it dries. But you still uh, you kind of like dab it off. So you still have some grime built up in the fingers and on the wrists. And this is going to be the pretty much what I'm going to do with everything. The rest of this model. Is that slap some paint on, dab it right off with a paper towel. Now if you look at Ito's rendering, he has green pretty much all over this dress. Just look at it. There's green everywhere on that dress. But I'm just going in with, I think this is Beltine Citadel Green. Uh, it's a pretty nice, gross looking green. And just do what I've been showing you. Put a little on, dab it off. We're gonna go ahead and add some Agus Earthshade to it. Uh, pretty much the entire model is gonna get covered in this. I'm just gonna go ahead and dab it off. And if you look, you can already start. It already starts looking like the PS2 graphic uh, 3D rendering photo. It's a pretty simple process, and you go. And that's why the gloss coat helps a lot, because you just dab it on and then take it off. And then here, I'm gonna go ahead. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I had to paint the panties. Disgusting. Very disgusting. <laughs> but, uh, but here you can go ahead and you can just, like, remove 
the uh, paint, if you feel like it's too much, just throw some enamel thinner on it, and it won't mess with the lacquer paint at all. And it just that it just removes the acrylic very easily. If you feel like you add it too much, really easy to do. Pay attention to this. You're gonna add some red to this, some uh, you know, Citadel shade red. Dab it off. And keep repeating the process of adding paint in that area, because you'll get multiple tones of that red, and it look like splotches. You see how you have that red ring that's being built up. Kind of want to build that up. This is a pretty cool effect you can use for like if you want really dirty clothes or something, like anything else. And here I just thickened up the red a little. Just add a little red paint to it and uh, just fall in whatever I see on the source material. Now I'm just prepping for the blood effect that I'm going to add later to the end of it. Just look at where she has her arms ha are covered in scabs or wounds. You kind of just want to add some red to that. So when you add the blood to it, it's a little darker. And then just here I added a line to where the belt is, just to like, so you can see a difference between the two. I wasn't too crazy about how the belt turned out. But uh, this helps like, so you can tell like, oh, this is your separate. And what I had going on the whole time when I was painting was I had Masahiro Ito's uh, 3D rendering up on the computer while I was painting. And I was just kind of following the patterns. Because if you could tell, he has a lot of green all over this model. A lot of dark crimson reds. He has some like greenish bluish shit splattered all over the place she was an absolute mess so that's pretty much what I went with and here I'm adding some of that greenish bluish mix I did just in that area really gross looking so keep repeating this process until you're satisfied and you can always take it off All right, the part of one's waiting for how to paint her face. We're gonna start with a red wash over the bridge of her nose, because that's how she looks. Now we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of brown wash around the chopped up areas of her face, just to darken that up a little. And go ahead and just give it a quick wipe. And next, we're going to want to start the purple around her eyes. I use a purple wash to uh, put a few light coats of this, and then it'll come out nicely. It doesn't have to be perfect, because her whole image as a whole is imperfect. She's all over the place. So just repeat this until you're satisfied with your purple color. Now the fun stop. Fun part. The square around her face, or well, her mouth. I already had it and I fucked up once, so I went ahead and did it again. Just wipe it off, do it over. So, cause what I, now I'm going in with a thicker red. And you just want to paint this square around her face just like that. It's pretty simple to do. And just uh, be as straight as you can with your square, cause that's how it looks everywhere. Alright, let's go ahead and paint her lips. Her lips are extremely, extremely dark purple. I went ahead and just slapped it on, and then I went ahead and just erased areas where I thought I put applied too much. I just repeated the process.
The great thing about this design is her hair is jet black, like black. You don't have to worry about tones or anything. Just slap some Vallejo black on there and you're good to go. some uh, some more sludge and crap on her leg it looks like it's like pulling out of her so you do is just build it up heavily and then uh, wipe it down streak it down just like that And I went ahead and darkened up the area again. The areas I painted previously with a little brown to make the blood areas look like it's a little more dried out and gross. And, uh, just repeat that. I went ahead and darkened the shit out of the back of her neck because her back of her neck you can barely see it, but every time like, you see like any drawings of her, the neck area is just completely darkened, so a nice dark red, and you kind of want to match it with your nurse head, so it looks like it's just not a separate head. to her chest, darken up that area, so you can see that she has her assets showing. start talking about chalk pastels. Chalk pastels are great. Um, this is like a blood, like a blemish set they use for dolls, uh, but you can use them for pretty much anything. What you want to do is, let's see, I gotta work with some browns, so I'm gonna pick the browns, lift it up, I just want to scrape it so it becomes a powder and uh you know this is like a new thing for you know me but i'm sure there's people out there that know how to apply makeup it's probably easier for you guys but for me i had to learn it on my own and i had no idea what the hell i was doing it's like a this is like a tamiya weathering sponge brush but a makeup applicator that costs way too much. So let's go ahead.
Now there's all different, there's like all different ones. You can get any chalk pastel set you want. You get them from like Michael's, you get a big pack of it. This one's just mostly like tones. But now I'm just gonna go ahead and smear some of these purple, some of this red, some of this brown. Pretty much all over the model like I've been doing. And I uh, keep following that 3D rendering because that's like an excellent you know, thing to look at. So what you really want to do is you want to accent her uh, collarbone or cleavage and probably around here. And keep going. Now I'm going to go ahead and seal in all of our work. We're gonna, I'm going to use GX uh, Super Smooth, Mr. Super Smooth. I have a rattle can of it, but usually I just airbrush it, but the rattle can just saved me some time and might as well use it. Uh, I love this top coat. This goes with like, everything. Literally everything. You'll get a nice satin finish and it just looks perfect. Like on, I don't care what you're painting. When you top coat metallics, it kind of loses shine, so I went ahead and just dry brushed the base color I used on it to shine it up again. You know, just give it a good shine. Same thing for the pipe. I went ahead and just painted a, some metallic. You know, just hand paint this part. Make it easy on yourself. Pretty simple steps. You don't know what kind of pipe they're using. Is it galvanized? Is it cast iron? It's probably a broken galvanized pipe, so you want to stick with silvers. So, go ahead with that, go ahead and throw some washes on it, make it, make it yours. Final effect, blood. We're gonna put some of the Citadel blood for the blood gods all over the place. So, the bubblehead nurse always has like blood around her mouth, if you call it that. And I went ahead and just added blood to the areas I, were, I kept darkening when I was painting to add it for the open wound scabbed look. And I uh, kind of smear some blood on the uh, gloves to look like she was, you know, grabbing shit, who knows. So go ahead and have fun with the blood effect. It's always a fun paint. But if you guys can recommend me like a different blood effect, uh, go ahead. I need something that's a little darker. Final thoughts on the model. I made a base for it with the, uh, the original metal plate. What I did was I just smoothed out some uh, epoxy on it and just with the, you know, with the metal ruler, just making, you know, 12 by 12 squares, kind of to match the Brookhaven uh, picture that I, I was looking up, just to like, match the tile work from it. Just uh, white, black, throw some fucking, you know, throw some weathering on it, nothing crazy. But, uh, and it's thin enough where the magnet still sticks to it. And a very cool idea. If you could get these metal plates, these help a lot. Uh, I got this from uh, work, because uh, from welding, they're just, they lay around everywhere. So I just, when I see them, I just grab them. So I got a whole stack of them. So yeah, let's put this down. And final thoughts on the model. Um, this was uh, a lot of work. These help painter models are no joke. They take up a lot of time, a lot of work. Uh, I was, hesitant to build it for a while i was hesitant to build any of them for a while because yeah they're expensive and they're uh you know they are very time consuming i'm so busy with my you know with my life it's very hard hard to make time 
to, uh, to find time to build paint models, let alone edit a freaking video. Uh, I did this video to help out a lot of uh, Silent Hill fans to uh, like, hey, it, it, it's possible. It's possible. If you know me in real life, you gotta you, you, the people that know me, they're like, all right, if Dan can do it, I can do it. And that's, <laughs> seriously, that's what I wanna show you. You can do this, anyone can do this. It takes just patience. Just be patient with these things. And um, I like how, I do like how it came out. The only thing I could, would have done differently is maybe build up the belt a little bit, put a really thin layer of epoxy on it to make it look like it's coming out a little. So it looks like she's wearing a belt. It kind of blends in too much and uh, it doesn't, well, that's about it. But the rest of it, I like a lot. Um, I know it looks a little choppy right now, but I, I try to do as much as Masahiro Ito's uh, rendering paint job as possible. If you really want just the PS2 graphics, just pretty much airbrush what I showed you and do not continue. <laughs> like, don't even do the hand painting weathering. Like, just hand paint the, like uh, some details. But if you just skip all the weathering process that I showed you with all the Citadel paints, uh, you pretty much have a PS2 style uh, PS2 style uh, figure, but I don't know if that's what you want. But uh, I really hope this helped. And it, seriously, if you guys have any questions, just message me, comment on the video. Is there another uh, creature, like Silent Hill creature or character you want to see done? I'll do it. I know if you're watching this from just Silent Hill. Uh, I do paint a lot of different models. I'm all over the place. I spread myself so fucking thin. I'm all when it comes to models. I just love painting anything that like I grew up playing, like Silent Hill video games or uh, like Gundam models or whatever anime that I liked a lot growing up. And that's all. I'll really just paint anything. But uh, if there's a specific Silent Hill creature you want to see or characters, let me know. Maybe I'll make another video. And, uh, yeah, I hope you guys, uh, enjoyed this. And just to give you an idea, there's another one that I have built and climbed up for a while. Hell Painter Pyramid Head Ultimate version or something. It's pretty big, but maybe I'll get around to painting that too. But yeah, anything you guys want to see, just let me know. Alright?